All right. Well, uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, uh, whatever time it is for you all. Um, thank you for tuning in with us. Uh, welcome to the Northwestern University presentation. Uh, happy Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, it's a wonderful rainy Monday here in Chicago. I was just on the phone with my brother um, and it was hailing. It sounded terrible. It didn't hail up here, thank goodness. Um, but I have covered parking, so it's not really that big of a deal. Uh, my name is Robert Ellis. I am a Senior Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admission at Northwestern. I'm also an alum. Um, I graduated in 2012 from the School of Education and Social Policy. I'm originally from the south suburbs of Chicago. Um, so I grew up about an hour south of campus. Uh, while I was on campus, I was involved in many different things, primarily focused around cultural life on campus. Uh, but some of my favorite memories don't have anything to do with the kind of organized events I was a part of. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is to play board games. Um, I love playing Monopoly, for example. Uh, when I lived on campus, we lived in a suite and we would invite folks over all the time to play Monopoly. Um, and I was known for flipping over the table uh, because I would get so angry that people would gang up on me for me to lose. Um, and I had a bit of a temper, uh, but I'm just a co-star today. Um, I'm not, you know, really the main course here. Uh, I'm gonna hand it over to Patrick for him to introduce himself. Thank you so much, Robert. Um, hi everyone, my name is Patrick and I am a fourth year student from Mount Prospect, Illinois, uh, just like a suburb outside of Chicago. So here at Northwestern, I'm pursuing a double major in radio, television and film in the School of Communications, along with a major in economics in the Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences. Um, on campus, I'm also the film man manager for Studio 22, which is one of the largest film boards on campus that just focuses on you know, giving grants to students to produce their work um, and to produce their films and shorts, um, while also educating students to through technical workshops and guest speakers. So living so close to Evanston, I visited our beautiful campus multiple times, even before I was this exact info session that you are today. Um, and although I knew Northwestern was my dream, I'm excited to tell you why it was my top choice and why it continues to be mine to, uh, to this day. Awesome. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge kind of the circumstances that we're all in. Um, both, you know, Patrick and I are at home. Um, we're presenting to you uh, via Zoom, on YouTube, and um, we're not in person, and that's, you know, because of the pandemic and how it's impacted kind of our country and the world in general. And then on top of that, we have this kind of racial reckoning going on, and then uh, the wildfires and the hurricanes, and like everything is, you know, pretty interesting right now. And so I, I thank you all for taking the time out of your day, uh, you know, to come listen to us, to watch this presentation. Uh, but also, you know, for taking the time away from your busy schedules. Uh, you know, we, we understand that there are, are lots of things going on and these circumstances are impacting people differently. Um, but I, I just want to acknowledge, you know, that, you know, we hear you, we see you. Um, and if there's, you know, anything we can do uh, in regards to helping you understand Northwestern a little bit better, please let us know and, you know, we'll be happy to do that. Uh, but just to get us started, understanding Northwestern really does require understanding where we're situated. Um, and so Northwestern is located three miles north of the city of Chicago, about 11 miles from downtown Chicago. Uh, so it's about a 30 minute drive if you're lucky, uh, 45 minutes if we're being realistic. There are a few ways that our students will get downtown from our Evanston campus. The most popular way is our inner campus shuttle. It'll take you from our Evanston campus to our Chicago campus for free with your student ID. It'll drop you off about three blocks away from Michigan Avenue, the Magnificent Mile, uh, four or five blocks away from Water Tower, which is a mall in downtown Chicago. You could also take the elevated train or the L. If you get the transfer just right, it'll take you about 50 minutes to get downtown. And then there's also the CTA buses. And so we have partnerships with museums that you can get in for free through student ID, uh, partnerships with the theater district so you can get discounted tickets. And if neither of those things is interesting to you, uh, window shopping is free for Northwestern students as well. Um, Chicago is the third largest city in the country. Um, there are lots of things for you to do, lots of neighborhoods for you to explore. Uh, Chicago is a great food city, for example, but one of my favorite things to do in Chicago is to go to the museum. So I like to go to the Shedd Aquarium in particular. Um, I love to tell the story about there's this turtle um, in the main tank and its shell got split open uh, because it got hit by a boat. And it's a very tragic story. Um, but because of that, um, when it swims, it has to swim with its butt in the air. Um, and I find that kind of amusing. Uh, Patrick, what do you like to do in the city of Chicago? 
Sure. Um, so Robert, you actually mentioned this, but I also love museums. Um, and so one of my go-tos, especially, you know, with a lot of art history classes here at Northwestern, you're going to have the opportunity, if you were to take that class, to go with a group of students, obviously pre-COVID, um, with a group of students to to the Art Museum, uh, to the Institute of Art, and just kind of explore some of the best works in history. So you have artists such as Monet, uh, Picasso, Van Gogh, and, you know, it's kind of just you walking around and taking it all in. So I'm actually in an introductory art history course right now. And although we won't be able to go to the Institute previously, uh, they were able to go uh, to one of the exhibits and they actually have a Monet exhibit going on right now. Um, but you also have the opportunity to just do things on your own. So I've, since I've been close to Chicago, I've had a chance to explore the city, but the food here is immaculate, is incredible, probably the best in the country, in my opinion. Um, and just one spot I found a few weeks ago was Beacon Donuts, which is sort of like this hidden donut shop in an alleyway in Lincoln Park. Um, and I've kind of just been like using my time to take some takeout from different like sushi places and a bunch of other foods. So really, it's all up to you how much you want to explore. But even if you're not doing it on your own, you're able to do it with uh, with your classes and other students here at Northwestern. Awesome. I I love to eat. So I love to to check out restaurants. I'm gonna check out uh, Bacon Donuts then. Um, I like to start off talking about Chicago because it gives you kind of this understanding as to where our campus is located. Um, and so our campus is in Evanston. Um, it sits right on Lake Michigan. Because of that, we have two private beaches and a sailing center available to our students. So I feel like water sports is going to be opportunities for you to get involved there. We also have three gyms on campus on our Lakeside Trail. So if you like to exercise, there's plenty of opportunity for that. Um, our campus is very walkable. Um, it's only a mile long, half a mile wide. So you can get from one end to the other in about 15 minutes or 20 minutes for a freshman because freshmen walk slow. Um, and so Evanston is really this great college town. Uh, lots of things for you to do. Anything you would ever dream of or need um, is available to you at Evanston. But because of our proximity to Chicago, um, you have the resources of a major metropolitan area at your disposal. And so I always like to talk to students about how our campus gives you that college bubble um, that students are seeking often when they're looking for colleges, but it also gives you the opportunity to branch out into a world-class city. Um, and that sort of idea, um, kind of bringing, you know, different people or things and activities together is true on our Evanston campus as well. And so you'll find that we have students from all 50 states and over 95 countries abroad. So we're very diverse geographically, um, but we're also diverse in any measure that you can think of. And so that can be racial or ethnic diversity, socioeconomic status, or what sorts of academic programs you're interested in. Do you rise early, get a blade? Do you like green apples or red apples? Literally anything. Uh, my favorite thing about Northwestern is the diversity, diversity and perspective that we have there. It's very easy for you to sit down with someone that you don't know and talk about what's going on on TV. Uh, TVs at Northwestern are typically tuned into ESPN. Um, so maybe you talk about how the Lakers won the NBA championship and that turns into a conversation about economics or politics or physics or chemistry literally anything. A Northwestern students are very passionate about what they're doing inside and outside of the classroom, so it's very easy for you to learn from your peers. Um, learning from your peers is a hallmark of a Northwestern education, um, and since we have so many students from different walks of life, we want to make sure that you're able to have those small discussion-based courses at Northwestern. So you'll see here that we have a six-to-one student-to-faculty ratio, uh, what you don't see is that about 80% of our classes enroll fewer than 20 students and only 2% of our classes have more than 100 students. Any course that has 40 or more students is required to break down the smaller discussion sections so that you can discuss course content with the TA or with the professor, so that you're always getting that small classroom feel. Another way, or the really one of the main reasons how we're able to keep our classes so small is because of our academic system, the quarter system. And so most students are familiar with semesters uh, where you split the year into two semesters. You take about five courses a semester, 10 in a year, typically somewhere between 38 and 40 courses over your time at school. Um, at Northwestern, we split the year into three academic quarters with an optional summer quarter. Um, and our students will take about four courses a quarter, 12 in a year, of 48 over their time at Northwestern. So it's eight to 10 more classes that you get to take by virtue of being on the quarter system in comparison to the semester system. And so it builds in a lot of flexibility. It gives you the opportunity to change your mind, to add additional academic program, to study abroad, to take time off to pursue an internship opportunity. Um, my favorite thing about the quarter system is the fact that you get to take more classes and you have the opportunity for more exploration. That exploration enables you to take courses, not just in your primary school at Northwestern, but across our six undergraduate schools. 
And so when you apply to Northwestern, you apply to one of our six undergraduate schools, and you'll see the College of Arts and Sciences in the center here, surrounded by these more specialized schools, uh, but you're not stuck. You're not on an island. You can move fluidly between schools. You can major across schools. You can take a course in another school just because you're interested in that particular topic. And so we don't limit what it is that you can do inside of the classroom. If you fulfill the prerequisites for a course, you're able to take that course with no questions asked. And so you might be wondering, you know, what is it like to take courses, you know, across six schools? What does it mean to be able to have access to these different um, schools and opportunities? Well, I'm glad you've asked that question because Patrick here can tell you all about it. For sure, thank you so much. So definitely throughout my first three years here, almost three and a half now, um, I can attest to countless opportunities that are really provided by our school's curriculum. So as I mentioned before, I started off as an arts, sorry, I am now an RTVF and economics major, but I actually entered Northwestern as a biomedical engineering major in the McCormick School of Engineering on the pre-med track. Um, but kind of like throughout my first quarter, I came to realize that it wasn't, medicine wasn't something that I was really passionate about. So from then on, I began for searching for a new major. And through that time period, I really took the opportunity to take classes across all schools, basically. So whether it was a law, on the Amer law of the American economy class in Weinberg, a screenwriting course in the School of Communication, or um, an intro to journalism course in Medill, I was really offered the opportunity to explore what classes interest me, interested me the most. So I was able to find what the right major fit for me was but um you know my, my story might be getting a little bit ahead of ourselves so since i'm nearing the end of my northwest time in northwestern and you're only starting the beginning of your college career so the journey of every northwestern student and all of you today is going to be completely different many students come in knowing exactly what they want what they want to do from the get-go so my friend ali she entered and graduated northwestern as a theater major with a musical theater certificate um, and she was performing and auditioning for shows across the four years that she was here. So whether that was the WAMU show or the Dolphin show, which are respectively the largest student written and student directed shows in the country. Um, and now after graduating, she's already on her way to LA to pursue a career in acting. Um, but I'm sure that many of you are still trying to determine what you want to study. So for example, my friend Courtney, she entered Northwestern undecided. Um, and with 50% of our applicants choosing that major, it's actually the most popular amongst our applicants. So she took her freshman year to really kind of just have a taste of everything. So she was taking introductory courses in econ, chemistry, English. And after using that first year to determine what she actually wanted to do, she entered her sophomore year as a psychology major and now has spent the past two years working in research labs, focusing on developmental psychology and is using her senior years to work with professors on her thesis while also publishing some of her studies. And she's going to start pursuing a graduate degree to get a PhD in the field. And just like many students, she couldn't have found the right major fit for her with the assist without the assistance of our great faculty and advisors that we have here on campus. So whenever you declare a major in any of our schools, you are assigned an advisor in that school. So because I'm both in the School of Communication and in Weinberg, I have an advisor, one for each school. And they assist me with anything ranging from internship exploration to extracurricular activities or just my classes and my degree progress. And in the classroom, you do have the ability to have one-on-one -on -one time. So as Robert mentioned before, we do have a very low six to one student to faculty ratio. And as he said before, also 80% of our classes have fewer than 20 students in them. And even in our larger classes, you are able to have a weekly discussion section. So you are having a deeper analysis of the material that you learned in lecture that week. Um, and actually 100% of our faculty is required to host their own office hours. So you always have the opportunity to chat with the professor if you need it. And these office hours are also, aren't also just great to say if you're struggling in class to perform a little bit better with the help from the professor, but you also get another mentor on campus that can help you better navigate Northwestern's academic structure. So Northwestern academic structure is really built to help give you time to figure out what it is that you're really passionate about, what you want to explore and what you think you might wanna pursue in the future after Northwestern. So beyond that, the quarter system just gives you ample time to take a deep dive and get this liberal arts education that we're talking about. Um, and Northwestern, you really have three buckets. So you have major requirements, distribution requirements, and your electives. So major requirements are going to be about 11 to 17 classes out of typically the 48 that you're going to take. And they'll be within that major department that's your home school. Um, and then your distribution requirements are that liberal arts curriculum that we're, that we're talking about. So that being said, there isn't really going to be one class that every Northwestern student takes. So you're going to have, say, a humanities component or a STEM component that's going to be about three to five classes in that genre. And we have a choice from, say, 30 to 50 per quarter that you'll be able to choose from. And last, you have your electives. And this is really just a chance to explore anything random that you wanted to before you came to college or that you figure out you want to explore while you're here. So we have a Milky Way Galaxy class where students are able to conduct ex experiments working on galaxies, stars, black holes, or you can even do an art of storytelling class where you basically just kind of share stories about your life with your peers. 
Um, and with the ability to take so many classes, you are still somehow left with room to explore other areas, including research and studying abroad. So Northwestern allocates $3 million annually to undergraduate research, and the funds are typically distributed through grants, travel grants, or research assistant positions in our labs. But the type of research that you can do really seems never endless. So my friend Mac, who is also studying radio, television, and film in the School of Communication, she spent her summer researching how adult cancer survivors are affected post-treatment for a script that she was writing. She then went on to pitch the script to the Multicultural Filmmakers Collective, which is a student group on campus that focuses on implementing diversity um, in, RT in the RTBF department. And after pitching it, she got the grant and she was able to produce the film herself. Um, but my other friend, Sophie, she partnered with the United States Air Force on studies that focus more on post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, and they were trying to find biological indicators that individuals be more prone to PTSD. She has done so much now. She presented to the largest neuroscience conference in the world and is actually completing Northwestern's neuroscience PhD program after graduation. And many students even decided to take this research out of Northwestern's campus, choosing to partake in our extensive study abroad program. So Northwestern has about three study abroad offices that help you choose from 150 programs from around the world. And about one third of our students choose to study abroad during their time here. And for any programs that are affiliated with Northwestern, you are able to receive course credit for those classes when you come back here. Um, and don't worry, financial aid also does travel with you. So a financial burden should not stop you from taking classes outside of the country. So my friend Mary, for example, she's majoring in uh, economics and learning and organizational change in the School of Education and Social Policy um, with also a minor in global health. And she knew that she really wanted to go into the business side of healthcare. So during her junior fall, she spent, spent it in Geneva, Switzerland uh, to further understand sort of the global spread of HIV and AIDS and learning both inside the classroom and then conducting research out of it um, with the International AIDS Society. Her broad experience really just kind of reaffirmed her passion for the field while also showing, demonstrating what specific things she needed, to, she needed to do to prepare for the industry. And these really aren't the only ways to pursue experiential learning because innovation centers are also present on Northwestern's campus. And these centers are available to students in all of our schools and all of our majors. So you don't have to be majoring in something business related to explore this. So for example, Studio 22, as I mentioned before, distributes over $15,000 annually to student filmmakers to fund any on-campus productions. And through these, uh, through these grants, students are able to explore any type of passion for filmmaking. So whether that be directing, writing, producing, um, and they can gain this experience even before stepping foot in the entertainment industry. And additionally, the board hosts workshops teaching students how to edit scripts and improve your stories, how to say use specific equipment or how to even light a film set. Um, and at the same time, you're also getting panelists and speakers from around the country and the world um, who have already had some experience in the film industry. So a couple of years ago, we had Boots Riley, who was a director of Sorry to Bother, Bother You, which is an award-winning film, come and talk about his experience in the industry. And we've also had alumni at HBO, Sony Entertainment, and FX, just to really name a few. And not to mention, students are also able to learn more about their desired career path through the countless opportunities for internships and pre-professional experiences that we have here. So over 70% of our students have reported having at least one internship as an undergraduate. And in my time here, I've been able to partake in three. So my first came in Ally Global Marketing, which is an advertising agency downtown through the Chicago Field Studies Program. Which assists students in getting internships downtown through multiple industries, including you know, marketing, finance, consulting, and people have gone, to, gone on to work at companies such as Pepsi, Goldman Sachs, and Morgan Stanley, just to name a few. Um, and then you're able to receive that course credit by taking a class, say, once per week um, that's going to be teaching you more about just the business world in general. Um, and I landed my next internship primarily with the help of NCA, which is Northwestern Career Advancement, a phenomenal resource on campus. So it really just kind of does anything from resume and cover letter building to in interviews, mock interviews, um, and then also pre preparation for the career fair. And so with their help, I was able to intern in New York last summer uh, at a smart city technology company, also sort of in, in the advertising industry, where I kind of got more experience with product managers and operations team members. And so using that newfound interest, I was able to actually get an internship at Hulu this past summer, um, working on their ad ops team. And now I'm returning next fall as a campaign coordinator to the New York, New York office. So it all kind of works out pretty well um, and for, for most people here at Northwestern. Um, and other ways students that students can gain internship experience can also come through their curriculum. So we have something called a journal, journalism residency, which is for the Medill, uh, Medill School of Journalism. And that's sort of where students are able to spend one quarter just kind of exploring 
say in the media and publication industries, just whether they're interested in the field. So my friend Leanna, she went to New York to work for LinkedIn um, her junior fall. But then I also know people who have gone to Facebook and Instagram. Um, and in terms of unpaid internships, Northwestern also offers a lot of assistance to students, including SIGP, which is a summer internship grant program. And that offers students for anyone who offers funding for students who are in unpaid programs to say cover housing and food costs, but to also make sure that students are pursuing internships in the fields that they're actually interested in. Um, and these recent graduates also end up at a variety of respected organizations around the world, as Robert's going to tell you. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, so you'll see here a small sampling of places where our uh, alum work at. Um, and so you have a lot to choose from. There are lots of different avenues and opportunities for you. Um, there isn't any one size fits all. Uh, Northwestern is really a place that you can come and explore all of your interests and end up really working in any field. Um, so you could be like one of my good friends, Charles. Um, he works for Cartoon Network. And what he does is he reviews all the storyboards and scripts for all of their cartoons. Um, so every time there's something on Cartoon Network that I don't like, I ask Charles how he got beyond his desk. Or you could be like one of my good friends, Amin, who his passion is dentistry. So he wanted to be a dentist, but he also loves to rap. And so what he does is he's a dentist, but then he remixes popular songs um, and he makes the topics about dentistry, right? And so there are lots of different ways that you can pursue those different kind of ideas and passions and Northwestern will help you uh, along your way to ensure that you're able to kind of accomplish your goals. And so you'll find that we have a pretty good sampling of um, well-known alum. Um, so there's, you know, a lot of people who you can be associated with. Some of my favorite people are like um, Jenny Rometty, who is the executive chairman of IBM and the first woman to head the company. Or, you know, I love late night comedy. Um, and so I love to watch Stephen Colbert and Seth Meyer. Um, I don't stay up late anymore, so I end up watching it the next day because um, that's what happens when there's nothing left for you to do after 1030. But, you know, uh, those different ways in which our alum are involved um, in their industries uh, really does help you to kind of enjoy the opportunities afterwards. Uh, but a lot of our alum um, enjoyment of Northwestern really does come first from their experiences on campus. And so I'm gonna hand it back to Patrick uh, for him to talk about the different experiences that you can have in the community. For sure, thank you so much. So all students are, we want for students to live two years here on campus, allowing for them to really kind of build a community here. So with over 26 campus residences, you can choose from multiple options, including res colleges and residential halls. So for example, one of our residential colleges, Ayers College of Commerce and Industry, that's a mouthful, has um, students who are primarily interested in business, but you can also live in a residential hall, which is just gonna give you a more standard dorm experience. And then these buildings are typically grouped into areas that are host events for students across buildings. So you're really just able to meet people from everywhere in Northwestern, basically. You're not just kind of confined to your dorm and you know just kind of like interacting with those people. However, besides your living space, you also have many opportunities to build here on uh, you know, a community here on campus through the many traditions that we have. So your first community actually starts from the minute you get on campus. Your first week here, you're gonna be spent participating in Wildcat Welcome, which is our week long orientation program for first year students and transfers. And so for Wildcat Welcome, you'll be grouped with people typically in the same major as you. And then you're also assigned a peer advisor, which is gonna be an upperclassman. I had the opportunity of being one these last year and it was the time of my life. I had such a great time. Um, and I mainly just guided students through getting to know the campus, registering for classes, and then also getting to expose to any and all student organizations here. But besides Wildcat Welcome, Northwestern has many traditions, including Dillo Day, which is the largest student produced music festival in the country. And the musical has, festival has brought in major artists such as Dea, Walk the Moon, Chance the Rapper, and happens at the, at the end of our spring quarter to really kind of just celebrate the end of the year. Um, however, my favorite tradi tradition has to be the primal scream that happens right before finals every quarter. So I believe it's like a Sunday at 9 p.m. And kind of just people decide to congregate on campus, whether that's like in the library at the quietest spot or just somewhere in Evanston um, and just kind of scream and release any on all stress from the quarter. Um, very different, but has made for some of the funniest moments um, in my time here. Um, and as you go through your years here, your community is actually only going to continue to grow. And then one, one way that students do find their community is through our student organizations. 
And here in Northwestern, we understand that every single story and journey of a student is going to be unique. There's really no one single way of going about college successfully. And that's demonstrated by our entire student body. So much is really going on at campus all the time. And you're able to meet so many different people from a variety of backgrounds. So as I was talking about student organizations, we have over 500 plus student organizations here on campus, which is a crazy number. Um, and it really just kind of offers students, one, to build that community, but to also gain leadership experience and into the field you're looking to go into. So for example, I'm the senior vice president for Delta Sigma Pi, which is a business fraternity. And we really kind of do similar things to what NCA does, but just kind of in a closer group where we help students, you know, build their resumes, learn how to network, how to go about finding a job. But we also have entertainment groups such as AO, which um, puts on so many speaker series, concerts, and film screenings throughout the year. So just this past quarter in the spring, virtually we had John Mulaney come speak to us and crack a few jokes. I'm such a big John Mulaney fan, so just even seeing him on the screen was pretty crazy. Um, but as you can see, really, the opportunities are truly endless. And I promise that during your time here, you're going to be, be able to find a group that fits at least one of your interests. Um, but obviously, in order for you to be a part of the Northwestern community, you'll have to apply first. So Robert's going to take you through our application process. Awesome. Thank you, Patrick. Um, so when you apply to Northwestern, um, you have the opportunity to apply utilizing either uh, the Common App or the Coalition application. There's no preference for either of them. Um, so submit the one that you're the most comfortable with. And then we have a Northwestern supplement. The supplement asks three questions. Which of our six schools are you applying to? What is your anticipated major? Which can be undecided. We don't hold that against you at all. Again, undecided, most popular major here at Northwestern. Then the third question is an essay question. Um, 300 words. Why do you want to attend Northwestern? Um, you can write about whatever you would like to. We just ask you to go beyond our location. We have two deadlines to keep in mind. The first is our early decision deadline, which is November 1st. And the second is our regular decision deadline, which is January 3rd. Uh, the difference between these two is that early decision is binding. So you're saying that if you're accepted to Northwestern, you'll absolutely attend. You'll draw all other applications from other institutions and you're good to go. Um, that's a huge commitment. We understand that. So you do have the opportunity to apply a regular decision where you can view all of your admissions offers, financial aid packages, et cetera, so you can make a more informed decision. If you absolutely know that Northwestern is a place that you want to be, um, you know, perhaps you go to sleep in extra purple every night, um, you already bleed purple, um, early decisions are a great opportunity for you. Um, if not, um, regular decisions is your only opportunity to apply to Northwestern. Uh, should you apply for early decision, you'll hear back from us um, sometime in mid-December. And then should you apply for a regular decision, you'll hear back from us no later than April 1st, hopefully not on April 1st, it's a terrible time to get news. And so whether or not you apply early decision or regular decision, we review the same six criteria. So in no particular order, we look at your essays. There's two, the one from your application, the one from Northwestern Supplement. Don't care what you write about, just care that you write about it well and that you answer the question. Um, I can't emphasize to you enough please answer the question. Um, you'd be surprised at how many people write great essays and never actually address the question. Um, so you don't wanna do that. You wanna make sure that you're answering the question that you have selected. Um, and you also wanna write about something that people wanna read about. So what I'm really asking you to do is to remain in the realm of appropriateness. Uh, so for example, a few years ago, one of the questions on the Common App was to discuss a place you feel perfectly content. And a student decided to write about taking a shower, which is a fine topic, except the way he described taking a shower was creepy and you don't wanna do that. Um, so if you wanna want, want to read about my showering habits, I don't wanna read about your showering habits. Um, we look at your grades and the rigor of your coursework and we look at those two things in the context of your high school. So we look at what kind of courses are offered at your school, did you take the tough courses and did you do well? We're not comparing your high school's curriculum to any other high school's curriculum, that wouldn't be fair. You couldn't take the courses at another school because you're not enrolled there. Rather, we just look at what could you have done, what did you do, and how well did you do in that context. We look at your um, extracurricular activities, so what you do inside and outside of school, you have a part-time job, what makes you you outside of going to school and getting good grades. We do understand that extracurricular activities look a little bit different right now, um, so we, we want to know how you're spending your time, you know, how are you maintaining those passions, um, what are the different ways in which you're interacting with your peers or with your community. We look at your letters of recommendation or letters of support. We require two, one from a counselor, one from a core subject teacher. Um, you can send us as many letters of recommendation as you want to beyond that. We just ask they speak to different parts of your character. So if you want someone to talk about you being the captain of the football team or the community service you do at your church or your work ethic as a fry cook at McDonald's, you can do so if you would like to. 
Uh, most students will send us one additional letter recommendation, so receive three from them. I'm um, sending us 10 letters that all say the same thing. It's not going to help you get into Northwestern. Um, I encourage you to think about who's writing your letters and what they can say about you. I mean, it might not be the most appropriate for you to get a letter from the teacher of the class you did the best in, because maybe they don't know you very well. Um, you showed up to class, you excel naturally, and you never really had to interact with them. So the only thing they can say about you is that you're good at math. And I can see that you're good at math, you got all A's in math. So really consider how those recommendation letters add to the overall narrative of your application. And then this year, um, we are neat, uh, excuse me, we're test optional. Um, and so, you know, if you took the ACT or the SAT, um, we're happy to have them to use in our evaluation. Um, if you were unable to take the test or you're unhappy with your score or you thought you were gonna be able to take it again, um, you don't have to send us the test scores if you don't want to. But if you are proud of those test scores, if you've already taken the test, um, we can use them in the evaluation. Um, so it's really up to you how you want to go about that. Uh, but do note that if you ask for us to use the scores in the evaluation, um, that we will use them in the evaluation, you can't kind of take that back. Um, so really consider that. Um, all of this is really important, and one of the things or the, the foundation of this entire review process is context, and so we're going to make sure that we're taking all the contextual factors um, in while we're making and evaluating and making decisions. And so through the entire process, um, we're need blind, so your ability to pay never comes into account when we're reviewing an application. And then in our financial aid, we're need-based. And all of our financial aid is based on need. We don't have any merit-based scholarships at Northwestern. Um, so you fill out the FAFSA and the CSS profile. Um, Northwestern determines your estimated family contribution. You're expected to pay that. And the Northwestern pledges to meet 100% of demonstrated need, which is the rest. So if your estimated family contribution was $5,000, you pay $5,000 and Northwestern covers the rest with no loans. Um, and so we're need blind for domestic students. So for US citizens, permanent residents and undocumented students, but we are need aware for international students. But we will meet 100% of demonstrated need for all students admitted to Northwestern. Um, if you're worried about financial aid, we do have financial aid calculator on our website. You can punch in a few numbers, see how much money you can expect to get from Northwestern. Um, it's an estimate, it's not exact. Um, but if you are using um, real numbers, it will give you something uh, pretty close to uh, what you can expect to get. Um, if you would like to, you can reach out to our financial aid office and discuss with them how financial aid works at Northwestern. Um, they are, you know, willing to help over phone and email as well. And then the last thing I want to say before we start answering some of you all's questions is that there are many different ways that you can connect with us through social media. Um, here on YouTube, for example, we have a lot of great content. Um, you know, if you like what we're doing um, and you're interested in us keeping it up, you know, like and subscribe uh, to the videos, as they say, um, but also follow our other social media channels as well. Um, you'll find um, a lot of great student voices and a lot of opportunities to interact, not just with the admission directors and with the students who work for us, um, but also with other students in the community. Um, and it's really a great way to get a good feel for the students at Northwestern. I'm um, considering that it's pretty hard uh, to come visit campus right now. And so with that, uh, we'll take your questions here. All right, so to start us off, um, how safe would you say the campus is um, as well as the overall environment? Um, I can take this one. Um, and then if you have something to add, Patrick, please feel free. Um, but I'll say that Northwestern, um, every time I go to Northwestern, it feels like the safest place I've ever been. Um, and, and with that, you know, there's like a blue light system um, where when you're walking up and down campus, if you know, you're feeling unsafe, for example, um, you can hit the blue light um, and someone can come assist you within a minute. Uh, we also have a safe ride um, after a 7 p.m. If um, you're on campus and you want to get from one place to another and you don't feel safe walking, um, you essentially can get a free Uber from one place to other on campus. I mean, that's a great opportunity. Um, and then uh, there's lots of different opportunities like shuttles that go up and down campus and throughout Evanston. Um, if you don't want to walk around, 
and then all of the residential halls are key card access only um, to get you know into the residential parts of them. So uh, it's a pretty reasonably safe place. Um, I do miss the way that I felt going into my residential hall on campus is not quite the same way I feel uh, walking into my apartment building. And that's to say, um, I worry about people getting into my apartment building more so than I do ever when I lived on campus. Um, I don't know, Patrick, if you have anything to add there. Yeah, I mean, I don't necessarily feel unsafe in my apartment, but I have to say that, you know, I, I especially in the dorm experience, I felt safe the entire time. You know, I always had a security guard uh, that was on the first floor just to make sure that everybody who was coming in lived there. Um, even at night, you know, the campus is super well lit. You have lights everywhere, especially here on Sheridan, which is such a big road. You know, you the sidewalk just looks like it's been there. Like, it's just bright in the middle of the day. It's fantastic. Um, yeah, and even in terms of my off-campus apartment where I'm living now, you know, the area is so safe. Um, I never sort of even have a worry of, you know, anybody breaking in or anything like that. So, um, yeah, you know, both off campus and on campus, you know, I feel pretty safe all day, every day. So it's it's a great experience for sure. Cool. And I do want to say, though, that I don't feel unsafe going to my apartment. I just know that people buzz me and they say it's a delivery and I like automatically just buzz them in. And I don't actually even think about like, what does that mean um, for like, um people coming in and out, whereas with the um, folks in the front of the residential halls, you always knew what people were doing. Anyway, that's a different point. I'll talk about that later. Um, next question is, do you find the course load is fairly easy to balance with exploring campus in Chicago? I'll let you take that one, Patrick. You know, I think that just with any college experience, you have more time to explore the older you get, especially once you kind of settle down and you figure out what you want to do. Um, that was kind of just at least the experience for me. So I think in that first year when I was, you know, taking a little bit more classes where I just kind of didn't know anything else, I was trying to figure it out. I wasn't exploring Chicago maybe as much as I would have liked, but, you know, still whenever my friends say like planned a couple days ahead and they were just like, hey, do you want to spend this weekend just like going to the city? Um, and I've gone, as I was saying before, I've gone to the Institute way too many times to count. I used to do just like coffee trips to Bryn Mawr, which is like a historic district right off the red line here. Um, and just like use that coffee shop to do some homework instead of like doing it at the local like Sherbucks or anything like that. Um, so I wouldn't really say it's been difficult to balance whatsoever. Um, I think that you're gonna get so used to just how college works, especially in terms of classes and how you balance your extracurriculars. And you're always gonna find time for anything that I feel like you wanna do. Um, and if that's going to explore the city, then you're definitely gonna be able to do it. And then, you know, once I would be a sophomore and junior and I was kind of just, I had the schedule made for myself and I knew what I was able to take on, what I wasn't. I was going to the city basically every weekend and I loved it. And it was exploring more cafes. And, you know, as I was saying before, just like love sweet treats. So Beacon Donuts was awesome, but I've also went to so many other donut shops in the city. Um, and just like me and my friends going to like a restaurant uh, to eat rather than like sticking around in our, in our dorms or apartments. It was, it was great. So the older you get, the more time you find, but you're always able to uh, find time if you want it. Cool. Let me ask a follow-up that's not hasn't been asked, but how would you say you learn to manage your time while at Northwestern? That's a great question. I think um, I made the mistake of every single first year where I <laughs> applied to so many student groups where I was like, yeah, let's just do everything because I definitely have the time for that. Um, and I remember I came into my sophomore year doing so many clubs and I was like, I, this isn't even possible. Like I can't take on this much. Um, and I think the re the way that I sort of got to the place I am now, it's you, you really kind of figure out what you're passionate about, especially in student groups. Um, and what is it that interests you? And you know, are you actually doing this because you like it? Um, and if you are in participating in those student groups, you're also going to find people with similar interests and you're going to see where you're kind of making most of your friends. And um, for me, that was very clear that that was just in uh, film groups. And so that's why I kind of stuck to that. And also being in my business frat, because I just also am sort of like a networking geek. It makes absolutely no sense. Um, so it's kind of just, yeah, I think that that's how I started to learn how to balance things, especially even with my coursework. I only started taking classes that I was actually really enjoying. So whether that was with film, you know, I make sure that every single week I or every quarter, I have sort of just like two film classes or two creative classes on top of maybe like two analytical ones that come with econ. Uh, just to make sure that, you know, I'm not taking four econ classes and then loading myself up with four exams in one week. That's just impossible to do. And just kind of making sure that you have a little bit of a nice mix between things that you really, really like doing and things that might be more on the harder side. Um, and that, I think everybody learns after their first year when they go to the student fair, student org fair, which is awesome. It's typically in Norris, which is our student center. 
um, and every single organization there that you can think of. This year it was virtual, but you know, you still are able to kind of find whatever you're passionate about the deeper you go into Northwestern. Cool. So the next question is, I'm, I'm very interested in triple majoring. It's a big part of why I decided on Northwestern. How possible it is that, and how many students have you seen personally do it? Um, and so it is possible to triple major. Triple majoring is if you know exactly what it is that you wanna do, you're able to do that. Those three majors have to be in the College of Arts and Sciences. Um, I, I do recommend reaching out to, uh, some, to an advisor um, to ask them exactly how it works. Um, I, in my time at Northwestern, I knew one student who triple majored. Um, it's not as common as you would think. Uh, it is very common for students to pursue multiple academic concentrations. So along with their primary major, pursuing additional major, minor, or certificate. Um, it's not uncommon for a student to introduce themselves and say that they have a double major with a minor and a concentration in something else uh, because Northwestern students really do love to learn. And because of the quarter system, it's really easy for you to, you know, have those pursuits. And so I love to tell people that I majored in human development and psychological services, um, which is now human development context in the School of Education and Social Policy. And I loved taking philosophy classes. And by the time I wrapped up um, my senior year, um, I had accidentally minored in philosophy. Um, and so it, it wasn't something that I was trying to pursue, but because of those extra classes, um, it, it just happened, right? So um, if, if you're really passionate about it and you really are interested in pursuing it, that pursuit is possible at Northwestern. Um, it's just something that, you know, you have to, again, manage your time to be able to do, um, which is why that time management piece is really important. Um, the next question is what makes Northwestern unique? I mean, I think if you ask anybody this question, you're going to get a completely different answer. Um, and so I'll let Patrick take it on since, you know, you've more recently been a student on campus. Um, so there you go ahead. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think something that I mentioned before, really kind of just like with the student orgs, that's kind of what stood out to me, especially my first after my first year. And it wasn't necessarily like, yeah, it's great. It's pretty insane how many organizations we have, but I think it's just the leadership experience that you gain very early on being here um, that has really just kind of taught me about so many things in terms of working with people. Because I have to say, when I came from high school, I was like, okay, I'll just do everything by myself. And then that's just how it's going to work. Um, and it taught me so many valuable things about teamwork and just also what people, you know, I'm interested in being around. And I think from my student org specifically, it was like, I was having such sort of, and this is another thing that I think is really fascinating about this place. It's you have very deep and intellectual conversations about the most random things all the time. So it's like, for me, okay. I'm a huge geek when it comes to like um, a data privacy and like how social media does data. And I'm like, I'm never gonna find a person that enjoys talking to me about that. And it's like, no, I, I was watching The Social Dilemma, which is like a documentary that just came out on Netflix. And so many people, you know, just like swept up on my Instagram story and they were just like, oh, I would love to chat about this. And it was all, you know, my friends here at Northwestern and we had great conversations just kind of about like how data is affecting our lives. and. You know, I don't think I've ever found that anywhere else. Um, and that's, you know, come from those student organizations because you really are amongst people who have similar interests, but also just like the intellectual curiosity that's just around campus everywhere. You know, and uh, that's something that's been fascinating to me and what I've really enjoyed because it's made me learn about new things that I maybe didn't know about prior to coming here. And also just people chatting about just crazy stuff 24 seven makes for a really good time. So I think that's like the one thing that's really stood out to me uh, from being here for these last three years. Awesome. I love to geek out too about certain topics. Education is my big one, but I, I love that about Northwestern as well. Um, I also just like where it's situated. Um, and so that might not be incredibly unique, but just all of the different factors coming together makes it feel very much like it's a very Northwestern sort of thing. Um, and campus is one of my favorite places to be um, still having graduated uh, eight years ago. Um, so the next question is, what is Northwestern doing to help incoming freshmen meet other students during COVID? Um, Patrick, do you have any experience with this? I'm imagining you know some folks who are um, peer advisors. And yeah, so I actually headed recruitment for these past two weeks uh, for one of our student orgs. And uh, you know, I was questioning just as much. I was like, you know, I couldn't imagine being a first year 
and you know having it all be virtual and just kind of like how are you going to meet people um so far it's actually been kind of interesting in the sense of people have it's kind of even made it easier for people to communicate i know that people so many first years came to our student org fair and were just like hopping into zoom rooms and you know just chatting with upperclassmen but also at the same time talking amongst themselves and you know finding those student orgs that uh, they really wanted to, be, to somehow you know I think that people were taking much more of an initiative to find things that they were passionate about because they knew that they were, you know, at home. Um, but other ways that I've just like noticed it's been through classes, you know, still being in a virtual atmosphere. I've noticed that professors are still trying as much as they can to have students communicate amongst each other, keep it at least like sort of as normal as possible. And, you know, all of us have been on Zoom for so long now that we kind of know how to how to interact with it. But I think that at least in the classroom setting, I've seen that professors are making an initiative for students to I kind of make it as normal for students as possible. Um, so I think that's something that Northwestern has been doing for sure. And I think that's kind of, it's, it's the best that we can do for now, but we're hoping obviously to somehow change it up. So first years have still a great, a great start to their college experience. Yeah. And it's, it's also really important to consider that all of the first year students are going through the same thing. Um, and despite that really being not, the best sort of outcome that could have happened. It is an opportunity to bring people together. Um, and it's also one of those things that you're able to talk about. It's, it's a shared experience. And so that's pretty cool. But it also helps that we're bringing people who are passionate um, about learning and about the things that they do. And they're able to bring that um, to the community. And that doesn't stop because they're not in close proximity. Um, and I, I really like that about Northwestern. I like that about the students. Um, very, very much just like, I mean, they will find a way, right? And I think that's, that leads to this next question, which is what does student life look like uh, during COVID? Um, all of these are, are student related questions. So Patrick, you get to keep talking. That's why I'm just a co-star. So. I mean, I love to chat, so it's totally okay. Um, I think that it's very different for off-campus students. I think uh, I can't speak too much to what the on-campus residential experience is like um, for the select few that are here. But you know, off-campus, I think it's something that we got very used to, like just over the summer being home. I had to come back because you know, family life. I was like there for like a few months, and I was like, it's time to go back to being independent. I loved being with my mom's cooking, but now it's like time to be an adult again. Um, <laughs> But the way that it's been kind of off campus, you know, it's whether it's kind of just like chatting with friends over Zoom or, you know, still going to Lakeville once in a while, um, even with my roommates, you know, it's kind of just, I think off campus experience has just kind of been as good as it can get. Uh, but once again, Robert, kind of how you mentioned, it was all of us are kind of in the same pool and we're all trying to get through it together. And, you know, some, we're, like, we're even bonding over it. It's like, you know, talking about the same things, whether it's just kind of, how COVID's been for us and also just kind of how classes are going. But, you know, I'm still seeing my friends. I made sure to take classes with friends. So I was just like, what class are you in? I'll sign up for it. So we can at least like chat and like at least chat over Zoom while the professor's talking. Don't do that too much, but obviously it's like, you know, we're still kind of interacting with each other um, and finding ways to do that. So the off-campus experience really hasn't been too bad. Um, not the senior year that I imagined, but I think I'm, I'm making the best of it. Good. I'd like to hear that. Um, so the next question is, what does student activism look like? Are most students organizing on or off campus? What does community involvement look like in this context? And so I'll, I'll go ahead and start with, um, students have always at Northwestern advocated for the things that they believe in and for the um, kind of causes and experiences, not just that they wanna have, but the things that they want other students to be able to have as well. Um, and so students have been organizing for a really long time. And so something that Northwestern celebrated recently uh, was the 50 year anniversary of the Bursars Takeover, uh, which is when the black students um, on campus uh, took over the Bursars office uh, for a period of time uh, to stop people from getting paid essentially so that people would listen to their demands. And so from that came the black house and came the African American studies department um, and, and so these things just never stopped. And so student activism is what created the neuroscience program and student activism um, is why we um, have, a, have a lot of different kind of cultural um, organizations and offices and the reason why social justice education is on campus and campus inclusion and community is so important. 
And so all of those different things, you know, they, they happen on campus quite a bit. And so organizing happens both on and off campus. One of the unique things about being so close to Chicago is that the politics of Chicago bleeds into Evanston and onto campus. And so students are very much aware of what's going on in the city. Um, and they wanna be able to help the circumstances of those who you know, need help, who, who need that sort of like activism to be able to seek um, equity um, on our way to equality. Um, and so I think that I, I always remember um, one of the first events I participated in at Northwestern um, was activism and talking about the need for multicultural voices in the classroom. Um, and so all of those different things really informed, made me really consider uh, how education impacts the ways in which we interact in the world, which is why I, again, I said it earlier, I geek out over education. I love to talk about it. Um, I know, Patrick, did you have anything you wanted to add about student activism? Yeah, I just kind of wanted to echo everything that you said. You know, it's students that have really, we make sure to push for, you know, reforms that do, you know, push equity and then further on go to equality. It's like, even with how I mentioned before, Multicultural Filmmakers Collective, something that they've been doing for years now, it's like, you know, how are students looking when they cast people um, for films or for theater performances? It's like, you know, it's kind of small things like that, but also bleeding into things such as uh, associate student government, where, you know, students are talking to the heads of our school and saying, you know, this is what we're missing. This is what we need. This is what we'd like for you to do. And they're communicating and, you know, changes are being made because enough students are advocating for each other and for the student body. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of just like been at least my experience with it and something that I've noticed in these past couple of months, it's students are, you know, both fighting for the, like just for the student body and for themselves. And, you know, it's kind of just been um, in a sense, it, it's been great to see because I, even in my three years that I've been here, I've seen many, many changes, both just in the RTBF department and also with the school as a whole. Awesome. So I guess a good follow up to that is, is Greek life a big part of campus life, uh, considering the conversation uh, going on on campus around that? Um, so a Greek life, to be honest, it's kind of just, uh, it's, it, Greek life is there if you wanted it to be there. You know, for me, it's, um, I'm a part of a business fraternity, which is a little bit different than being a part of a social fraternity or social sorority. Um, you know, it's really kind of just, it's definitely available to you if that's feel like where you, if you feel like that's where you're going to find your community on campus. And I have had many friends who have found their best friends there um, and have had great experiences. But you know, if say Greek life is something that you're not interested in, I wouldn't too worry too much about that. You know, kind of impacting your social life because whether that's you know finding again students in the student groups or finding people in classes or just you know seeing somebody randomly around campus and you just like strike up a conversation. Um, you're, you're kind of going to notice that throughout your college experience, you're going to find this sort of like natural way of like who you gravitate towards. Um, and if that's somebody in Greek life, that's awesome. But um, if, you know, that's the organization that's you're really not kind of looking to join, you are going to be able to find friends in different places. You know, we have a theater community here who's very, very close to each other. Same thing with RTBF. So many of my friends are radio, television, and film just because we're working on film sets every weekend. Um, and we're just helping each other with our projects and seeing each other in classes. So. Um, the way that you can find people really is never endless. And so Greek life is, yeah, just kind of to sum it up, Greek life's there if you'd like for it to be for you, but it doesn't have to be. And it really doesn't. I mean, for me, it hasn't been in my three years here and I've really enjoyed it. So you're seeing a prime example of that. <laughs> and I was in a Greek letter organization on campus. Um, and some of my best friends were in that or organization and then many of my best friends weren't. So yeah. Um, it's just, it's again, it, it is something that you do in addition to the rest of what happens on campus. Um, how possible is it to take more than two majors? Very possible, go for it. If you're passionate about it, please do it. Um, we encourage you to do so. Um, if admitted for early decision, when do we hear about scholarships awarded? So hopefully um, if everything's in, we'd love to get you that decision the day of, but within two weeks of your decision, um, we'll get you your financial aid package. Um, what could I do to make my application stand out? This is an interesting question. I mean, it's one that um, people don't normally like my answer to, but you stand out as an individual just in general. Um, you are not a cookie cut cutter person. You are who you are. Um, and so what is the narrative that you're trying to develop for your application? What is it that you want us to know about you? And just make it happen that way. Um, it's not really necessarily about standing out, because you don't want to stand out for the wrong reasons. But what you want to do is to present yourself in a way where it's authentic to yourself and it's telling your story. 
And then that really helps us to understand you and to make the best decision possible in the application process. How, you evaluate, how do you evaluate the extracurriculars? Um, my school offers only one extracurricular and I live in a small town with few opportunities. I try my best to create meaningful activities, but I am afraid. Well, that's a great question. Um, because we review applications contextually, um, we're gonna understand that you, know, you have less opportunity um, for extracurricular activities. And so what is it that you're doing? How are you spending your time? And so one of the things that's really important is that whether you're in two organizations or you're in 10, does it make that much of a difference? The question is, what is the depth that you're putting into those things? How are you showing that you're passionate? Um, are you passionate enough to pursue leadership? Um, you know, those different things. How, what's your impact in your community? And so it doesn't need to be 10 different things because if you're in 10 different things, it's possible that you don't have a lot of time to dedicate to those things. So, you know, really keep that in mind. Um, what is something that you originally thought about Northwestern that turned out to be different when you got there? Um, Patrick, you want to take this one while I think of something? Oh, I'm trying to think too. <laughs> um, what was different? Oh boy. That's what, actually, I do have something. I, I think that there's a very big split between North and South campus in terms of who's where, you know, it's, I think that's something that, which I didn't expect at least. Um, and I thought it was kind of just like everyone was mixed in together, but something that you'll find, I mean, which is a very smart thing to do, but um, we have the Technological Institute, which is up North. And that's where a lot of math and science and engineering classes were. So that's where I was my freshman year. Um, and, you know, I was amongst a lot of people who were studying the same things. And it's kind of like just the minute that you cross Foster, I'd say, and like you go past or even like right before Annenberg, um, you'll notice that kind of just like the whole vibe of the campus changes. And that's where you get to like St. Norris and you're at the RTBF's uh, department's uh, building, which is Anime Swift. And, you know, the buildings get so much older and the vibe of it just completely changes. So that's something that I have to say I did not expect um, was that there was just, a, it's not a huge divide obviously, but like the types of people you're gonna find on campus does range a lot, a lot based on kind of like where you decide to live. Awesome. Um, you know, I, I really can't think of anything other than um, when I was so used to it when it got cold, like people just stopped doing stuff. Um, even though I'm from the area, like if somebody wanted to do something outside, you're just like, mm, you got to wait till May. But if I asked somebody to do something or there was something that was happening or um, it required like walking a mile in the snow, everybody was more than willing to do so. And I think that that isn't necessarily about the code, but it really talks about how friendly people are. Um, and that's actually amazing. Um, so that's really maybe not about Northwestern as much as it is I'm surprised about people. Um, so uh, let's see. Would you classify Northwestern as a collaborative environment? Yes. I'll allow Patrick Absolutely. to expand on that. Absolutely. Um, something that I found in RTBS specifically, which I know I'm focusing a lot on it, but the people here have been phenomenal. I mean, whether it's just, I mean, the fact that we're like putting together actual films as like 20 year olds is actually crazy to me uh, because it takes so much preparation. And again, like as a collaboration between people to make sure that it's done, you know, whether it's pre-production and finding locations, finding actors, all this type of stuff. And then you have to acquire a crew. But once you get on set, that entire crew is working together for that one project. And then to have like, say, premiere at like Studio 22 premiere, which happens at the end of every year. And it's just a huge, huge event. Um, yeah, I've only experienced only like, and especially even like with econ, when it comes to prom sets that I don't know what I'm doing whatsoever. I have one do today actually, which is funny, but it's like, I don't know what I'm doing at all. And then I have like three of my friends who are like, we'll help you out. Don't worry. And I'm like, you know, that's great because you feel like in a lot of colleges you do hear something like, oh, it's a really, really cutthroat environment. Um, I've never experienced that here. Um, I, whenever I reach out for help, someone's always there willing to help me out with it, whether it's a peer, um, you know, or a faculty, uh, faculty member, everyone's been more than helpful and kind of like helped me get through this process. So yeah, absolutely a collaborative environment. Cool, final question, here we go. Um, this is a great question to end on too, which is 
what do you wish someone had told you when you were applying and or when you were a first year student? Um, I'll go ahead and start because I had access to the question and I thought about this, which is that um, when you are managing your time um, and you're really thinking about the things that you want to do and what's important to you, leaving time just for like exploring something new. Um, I, I didn't really start thinking about doing different things until winter quarter of my sophomore year, where it was like, I'm going to try going to, you know, one of these shows that I thought I had no interest in, right? Or uh, taking a class that sounds interesting, but maybe isn't my speed, right? Like just using the time at Northwestern and the flexibility available to be able to pursue these different things that you're interested in. Um, because when I applied, I knew there was a lot that I could do, um, but I, I just kept myself, like I expanded my bubble a little bit. Um, but uh, during my sophomore year, I really, I mean, I went to all these different acapella shows and I was uh, doing things in the theater community and I tried to be in a play and I, I did all of these different things that I never thought that I would do. Um, and it was really a great time and an incredible part of my experience. And then Patrick, you want to take us home? Definitely. Um, in terms of the application process, I wish somebody had told me this and I, maybe they did, but I didn't listen. Like, of course, try your best on every single application, put in the work that you have to, but just know that like where you end up is where you meant, where you're meant to be. Like you will, any school you apply, like anywhere you end up going, you're going to be able to make the best time of it. And you're going to have a great four years or however many years you decide to be there. And really just once those applications are through, just don't stress about it anymore because it's just not worth it. And enjoy the last year of high school because I miss it sometimes so much. Um, <laughs> and in terms of just freshman year, um, yeah, I would echo everything Robert said in terms of exploring. Like I was also kind of put in, put myself into a little bit of a bubble in terms of just like sticking to science stuff and then only maybe my spring quarter was I like, oh, well, I actually do like a lot of creative things. Why didn't I take this in consideration when, when I was applying and then also while I was here? Um, and then once I ended up doing that, it kind of just changed my life into, and now I'm pursuing completely different things from what I was when I first came here. So spend your first year here because it's also going to be maybe your one time to do it, to really figure out kind of, to be open to everything that you were, everything you want to explore um, and then just kind of go with that. So kind of let, yeah, let it take you. You'll be okay. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you all for joining us today. Um, again, follow us on all of the socials. Click the subscribe button. Um, if you like the video, you know, like it. Um, but also, if you have questions that you want us to follow up with, um, you can email us at ug-admission um, at northwestern.edu, and we'll be happy uh, to answer any questions you all have. Have a wonderful afternoon, evening, uh, morning, depending on where you are in the world. Take care.